Okay, so let's talk about three-dimensional drafting. One of the things that makes vector work so freaking cool and so much better than pencil and paper is that it allows you to draft in 3D. Okay, a couple things we're going to have to check for this uh, to make sure we're set up correctly. We're going to have to go to Tools, Workspaces, and make sure we're an architect. That's going to have most of our tools that we need for this. Spotlight is the theater package and has many tools that we need and sometimes we'll have to flip over there, but for the moment we're going to go into architect. Okay, once again, I'm going to close all the uh, windows so that we can find things. And if you work on the Vectorworks 1 and 2 file and draw in the blue grid, you're all set up to print. Okay, um, this is, here's the blue grid, this is not a fully set up file, but that's fine for what we're doing today. Um, we need to go to tool sets this time to pop up our basic set of tools. When we get tool sets up, we're going to see uh, yours might look slightly, might be arranged slightly differently because of your preferences. But there are all these little icons at the bottom. Okay, site planning, space planning, building shell, which is actually the one we're we'll working with, furniture and fixtures, etc., etc., etc. We're going to be working with building shell at the moment. The building shell is how we basically build a building, how we build walls. And one of the major things we're going to be doing out of the set is creating walls. Okay? And to do that, we're going to use the wall tool. Um, this is um, our tool sets. And then um, building shell. It's the icon of the little house. Okay, <coughs> window, palettes, tool sets. Okay, and then we need building shell. Are you in the uh, architect workspace? Okay. Window palettes, tool sets. Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay, uh, building shell, the top or the first tool is the wall tool. Okay, click on the wall tool. Notice we have a bunch of different ways we can draw the wall, we have a bunch of different settings. Um, normally, I say play with it, see what it does. In this case, or I'm going to say make sure you click on the settings first. Okay, your vector works is probably going to default to a six inch thick wall. That is the thickness of a standard interior construction. That is, however, not the standard for theater. Does anyone know how thick a standard theater wall is? And there's two answers. Three inches, that is one of them. Anyone know what the other possible answer is? One inch. So if you are building a hard flat, if you want your walls to have a wooden face on them so they look more like real world walls, more solid, you need to set your overall thickness to uh, uh, three inches. If you want to build your set out of soft flats, thinner flats, lighter weight flats, um, if your flats have to do a lot of flying, if they have to be a lot of lug carried around, there are certainly big advantages to doing them out of uh, one inch thick soft flats because they're a lot lighter weight. And then you would change this to one inch, okay? I'm going to go ahead and say three inches is just fine. Okay. Uh, next thing, insertion options. Okay. So that definition is what it should pop up with. Okay. You're going to set your thickness. Insertion options. Overall height. How tall do you want your walls to be? Don't worry. You can change this just like you can change the thickness later. But it's better if you can get things in vaguely correct at the first time. Okay. Um, someone have an idea how tall do you want your walls to be for Mr. Vermovac? Eight feet. Woohoo, that's what it's set to. Okay? So height is eight feet. Top offset is the distance from the floor at the top of the flat is. And bottom offset is where the bottom of the flat is. Okay? Now you may say, well, my bottom is always going to be on the floor, right? No, why wouldn't it be on the floor? So you can fly in, or maybe it's on a platform. 
Remember, Vectorworks doesn't understand platforms. Okay, so if you want to sit on top of a platform, you have to change the bottom offset. Okay, um, and you can choose uh, the texture of the wall. Apparently, the last thing I was drawing had a brick texture. I'm just going to say no texture. Okay, um, and you don't need to put any data in. So basically, you're going to do the definition of the thickness and the height and where the bottom is going to be. Okay, once that's all set, there is an okay button. Yes. For textures, are we going to be those? Not now, eventually, and I'll show you how to do them later. Okay. Uh, there is an okay button, and if I had my full screen, but because I've got to reduce this for the projector, I don't. But if you hit enter, it will take and accept all those values, okay? Um, but hopefully Jesse's screen has an okay button. Yes, yay. E excellent. Okay, now we're set. Now we're going to look at our wall here. And we have four ways, whether it's left control. In other words, I'm going to draw the left side of the wall, and it's going to do its thickness towards the right of my line. I'm going to draw the center of the wall. I'm going to draw the right of the wall. Or I'm going to do something funky in the middle. Okay? Okay. I tend to like to draw the center of my wall. That tends to be the easiest way for me to think of things, okay? But it doesn't really matter because they're all going to give you a wall. Okay, I'm going to draw a wall. Oh, right. I'm zoomed in really, really far here. Um, give me one second. Again, if you guys are working, I think your file is set up correctly, but I want to change my drawing so it's in quarter-inch scale. If it's not, layers, na uh, Windows palette navigation, layers, which is the second tab. Double click on that and edit. And I want to set my scale to quarter inch, which is right there. OK, OK, OK. OK, now I'm going to draw a wall. Look at that, I have a wall. If you want your wall to be a specific length, just like if you wanted your line to be a specific length, just hit the tab key. I want my wall to be eight feet. Um, Layers, edit, scale, quarter inch. Okay. Okay, so draw a wall. I can set my length. I want this wall to be 12 feet. I want the next one to be um, 8 feet at a... Um, 75 degree angle. Okay, look at this. I'm drawing walls. I can just freehand draw walls. It doesn't matter. How do you type? Do you just, um, before you do your second click, you just type the number? How do you set? What exactly do you press to set? Oh, to set it? Tab. Okay. Type it in. And again, so the first one, and then I can go at any angle until I type in an angle here. I'll do 180. Um, and uh, so, okay. Um, okay, when you're done, hover over the end of the last place you clicked and click again, and that's going to end your wall. Okay, so this is all one big wall. And the cool thing about that is window palettes basic, my basic tool set up here, that I can grab the whole wall and move it as a chunk. Okay, if I double click on it, come on. Maybe it won't let me. That might be a 2015 thing. Uh, in some versions, if you double click on it, you can grab parts of the wall and move them. Just move a part of the wall. Ah. Or if you can grab, look, I just yanked part of it out. Aha, that's cool. I don't want those anyway. They're in my way. And you're in my way, and you're in my way. Okay. Delete. Okay. Um, putting a door in a wall. So here is the three-dimensional, oh, and I should show you that this is actually a wall. I'm going to pop into 3D here for a moment and move around so you can see. Oh, yes, look, that's actually a wall. Ooh, ah, uh, look at that. Look, there's my set for Mr. Verma Vap. How do you go into 3D? I uh, use the flyover tool. Okay? And to get back to 2D, you can do view, standard views, top plan. It is uh, command 5 on an on a Mac and Control 5 on a PC, or if you have a 10 keypad on your PC, that's the like the calculator part, just hitting the 5 on the 10 keypad 
uh, I think takes you back to your top plan view. But I don't remember because I don't have a 10 keypad, so I don't get to use that much. Okay, so the process of putting a door into a wall is actually kind of complicated. Um, and I'm going to explain to you how we all used to have to do it in the old days. You would draw a wall to put a door and you would have to cut a hole in the wall the size of the door and then insert a door into the wall and put trim around it. Okay? Vector works, lovely people that they are, friendly people that they are, have given us a, do a door tool. I click on the door tool. That is a door symbol floating around. Look at that, door symbol. Door symbols love to attach themselves to wall. Look, it's, it's a weird door symbol in the middle of space. I get, oh, look, it attaches to the wall. It says, ooh, I'm a door. I like to be attached to a wall. I'm going to attach this to the wall. I click once. It's now in the wall. And as I move my mouse around, it'll change which way the door opens and closes. Okay, I'm going to have it open that way. Click. I now have a door in the wall. Okay. Let's go to 3D and see, do I, in fact, have a door in the wall? I, in fact, have a door in the wall. Look at that. I have a door in the wall that has trim and everything. Can you change how the door looks? Yes. And we're going to do that next. Okay? Okay. But I want to show you that, ooh, wait, I don't like my door there. I want to move my door. I can drag my door to here. Oh, look, I've just dragged the door. And it has cut the hole in the wall. It has moved the hole. It has done everything. Okay? So you want to change the door. Okay, to do that, I'm going to have to edit the object. The door is an object. And we're going to edit objects using window, palettes, object info. The object info box is our friend. It will allow us to change all kinds of things. Anything I've said, oh, don't worry, you can change it later. The way you change it later is through the object info box. Just before we get into the doors here, let me just show you. Object info box on the wall. Look, it's a thickness. It's a three-inch wall. Oh, you know what? I've changed my mind. This should be a soft flat. Let's make that a one-inch wall. Look at that, it's changed. You can even make walls into like circles. Uh, no, it's a wall. It's still a wall. So okay. if I want to make like a circular wall. You would use the round wall tool, I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, you know what? Height eight foot, no, this one needs to be nine feet. This totally needs to be nine feet. Okay. Do you see that change to nine feet? Of course not, you're in two dimensions. Let's go over to 3D here and see what happens. Oh, look, now that wall is nine feet tall. Okay? Uh, command five, we're back to two. I'm going to set this back to eight feet. Oh, you know what? It's not that I want the wall. I want the, I want the wall to float a foot off the floor. That's what I really wanted to do. Oh, look at that. My wall is floating a foot off the floor. Okay? Oh, but it's only seven feet tall because Vectorworks thought I meant to have the top. There we go. Oh, that's exactly what I want. Isn't that happy? Oh, yes. Lovely. Okay. No. We're going to go put life. Notice, by the way, the door is a completely separate object. The door did not move with the wall. The door will move in 2D space with the wall, but in 3D space, you've got to move the door separately. Um, uh, which is somewhat annoying and kind of cool at the same time. Okay. So um, I want to edit my door, though. It's my door I want to edit, so I'm going to select my door. Okay, and we can see object info for a door. It says right here that we're editing a door. Okay, my door is three foot wide by six foot eight. That is a nice standard door size. But if you want your actors to look more heroic, sometimes it's, it's uh, good to make the doors look a little bit smaller. Or you say, oh no, they're going to have really big hats and hair and stuff. I need to make the doors a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm going to make the door 30 inches wide because three foot is kind of a front door size, but interior doors are often 30 inches. There it changed, okay? Um, top shape. Oh, a square door on the top. Yeah, like that. Square. I like that. Oh, but you know what? This is an old-fashioned home. Maybe they have a round door on top. Oh, no round? No, maybe not. Segmented. Um, oh, we have to zoom in farther to see segmented. Segmented is uh, round, but not. Um, it's got divided into segments. Oh, you know what? Sloped. That would be cool. Or gabled. Or an ellipse. That's really what I want. Or gothic. Okay. Hopefully, one of those works for you. Uh, for Vectorworks number two assignment, for your rough ground plan, let me assure you one of these works for you. If you need something else, talk to me. Because then you're going to have to cut a hole in the wall and build a door separately. What about a Oh, you would like a double door. That's the swing of the door. 
Okay, so it's now a simple swinging door. Okay, simple swing, single hinge on the side. Uh, so you would like a, um, a uh, swing bipart door. Ah, there we go. Now it's two doors. So you just have to make the door bigger if you want. Oh, well, yeah, because now I need to be five feet wide. Don't check for updates. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, you know what I'd really like? I would like a... Um, I'm going to go back to plan view for this next one, so you can see. Oh, and by the way, it updates your symbols. Ooh. You know what I'd really like, though? I would like a uh, bifolding door. Door that folds up. Or a bifolding bipart door. Yeah, folds like a closet door, sliding door, um, or I would like a sliding door, or I would like, oh my gosh, what I really, really want is a pocket door. Oh, look, that's not going to work because it's got to slide out farther to go. Yes? Now, are like the knobs and glass, those types of things, mm -hmm. No. Oh, boy. Okay. Give me a second. You guys are going to have the really complicated doors. Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is you have two other things. You can put an opening, which is literally a hole in the wall with no trim, or a cased opening, which is a hole in the wall with trim. Okay? So those are your options. Again, play with them. There's all kinds of things. So you want to know about doorknobs and windows and things. That's your setting button. Okay? And it... And, Almost everything you can do in settings, you can do in object info, but here it does show you the plan view and the uh, rendering view, okay? So it can show you my height, my width, um, transom. Does anyone know what a transom is? That's a window on top of the door. If you want a transom, it's one click. And your transom can be all kinds of things, okay? Um, configuration, bipart swing. Okay, uh, 2D visualization. Um, again, you can. I'm not going to go through all of this in great detail, but you can play with that. Um, you can show all the parts of the jam. That's the framing around the door. Um, 3D visualization. This is probably what you're more interested in. When we're in 3D, do you want the door open or closed? Vectorworks defaults to the door closed. Maybe you want the door open. I'm going to do them open. I like them open at 45% so we can kind of see them. Um, okay. ID tag is not something you need. That's if you're ordering doors and you have a part number that you want to list on your ground plan. Okay. Jam. Okay. How thick is my jam, my framing around my jam? You know what? I think it's a big old house, so it should be, instead of three inches, it should be a full in. Or no, it should be, that'd be smaller. Oh, yeah. So one inch thick. Um, my leaf is my door, okay, there's not much I can change on the door. Oh, wait, except I'd like a panel door. Oh, look at that, okay. Um, there's not much I can set on that. Or a glass door, I want to see through it, uh, with prairie style mull mullions, okay. <clears throat> and you can start changing things that will allow you to change. Okay, or I want a custom door. And here are my pre-built custom doors that I can play with. Okay, I look, some of you look like you've died and gone to heaven. <coughs> okay? Um, so yes, that's what I want. That totally says Mr. Vermavep to me. Look at that. Okay? Lights. Lights are the windows to the side of a door. Okay? I would like lights on my set. Okay? Oh, look at that. I have noticed everything's changing shape. Oh, and I want mullions in there, and I want prairie-style mullions. Um, and you can set all your things. Threshold is the floor of the door. Uh, let's go ahead and include that. Transom. Oh, yes, I want my transom to have mullions. I want to have prairie-style mullions because they're cool and flashy. Um, okay, and trim. Oh, yeah, I need interior trim and exterior trim. Um, oh, and a lintel. Lintels go over doors. Lintels are cool. Let's put a lintel in. And, okay, do you notice how complicated my door has just gotten? Okay, yeah, mine looks okay. Okay, and there is my door. Okay, and let's look at my door in 3D. Okay, my door is now bigger than my wall. 
That's a problem. And Vectorworks is very happy to let you do that. Okay. One of the things to remember is Vectorworks is a computer program. Computer programs are stupid. They will do exactly what you have told them to do. Physics, you know, who cares? Okay. So this is one of those things where I would say, oh, that's very nice, Jesse, but you can't build it. Physics, life, okay? Um, okay? So again, you can do all this fancy stuff, but you go, oh, wait, no, I can't make this door work. Oh, bad designer, okay? Okay, so what you guys need to do is you need to do a wall with a door, okay? That should take you five minutes. Okay, am I right? That's your Vectorworks 2 assignment is wall with a door? Yeah. That's it. Okay, I want to show you though, because we have doors, we also have what goes with doors? Windows. Oh, yes, we got to do windows. Whoops, no, don't save. Cancel. Okay, I want to put a window in here. So on my tool, uh, um, my tool sets, I want to go down to window and put a window in. Yay, let's put in a window. I click a window, it goes in the same way as a door. Two clicks. And again, there's all kinds of settings. And I can go through the settings here and I can say, oh yes, oh yes, my window should have a transom. Because why not make it even more complicated than it already has to be. Um, and, oh, I want my window to open. Um, which means it would be a biparting casement. Oh yes, now it'll open. Um, and 3D visualization, I think it should totally be open at 45 degrees. Uh, we'll do it at 40 degrees, that's easier. Um, oh, and I want to have a clear story, and I want it to have, um, ooh, all signs of fancy fancy sills. Oh, and trim, gotta have trim, gotta have trim, trim's cool. Um, and a lintel, lintels go over windows, yeah, awesome. Ooh, and shutters, ooh, shutters would be totally awesome. There we go, okay, I have now made a way too complicated window, which was in my plan, and let's see how it looks in 3D. Oh, wow, look at that. Um, oh, except my shutters are on the wrong side. Uh -huh. right. uh, render. Okay, so my shutters are on the wrong side. I need to flip it. And that is just you hit the flip key. Flip. Huh. Why will it not give me the shutters on the side? I want them. Well, in all honesty, if you need shut, you guys are doing interiors. You don't need shutters anyway. Um, uh, somewhere in here there is a setting. There is a little checkbox. Fine. Look, there are my shutters. <laughs> oh, you know what? I drew exterior shutters, not interior shutters. The settings are in settings. Okay. Um, okay. They're there. Look at that. Okay, so we've got all this crazy stuff we can do. Um, and we can do all kinds of editing and all kinds of cool stuff, okay? But we've also got to do 3D stuff that's not just um, doors and windows, although doors and windows are a big thing, okay? Furniture. Now, how big, do you guys know how big standard furniture is? I don't either. So there's this wonderful thing called the internet, okay? And I'm going to just type in here, standard chair dimensions. Oh, look, it's one of my frequent searches. Okay, standard chair dimensions. And I'm going to click on something and get, oh, look, standard chair dimensions. So his chair apparently is one foot four inches deep, one foot six inches off the floor, two foot eight inches high. Woohoo, standard dimensions. You can now very quickly build furniture for yourself, okay? Because at this point on your rough ground plan, all your furniture has to be is a rectangle. So if a chair seat is about one foot four inches, that's a square that's one point one foot four inches. Okay. Oh. Square. Tab one foot four, tab one foot four. Okay? And if I'm sure, if I'm not sure, I'm going to remember that that's a uh, chair. I might use my text tool and type chair. 
Okay, I'm going to show you guys a tool called group. I've now highlighted both the word chair and the box. And if I do modify group, they're now one item that I can drag around. Woohoo, I have a chair. Okay. Oh, how big is a table? Okay, a table is, I looked it up and find out that a table is about 36 inches. Um, and I'm going to write table. table. And I'm going to group those because it makes things very easy. Okay. Now, is this really a chair or a table? Uh, it's the right size, but it's not really a chair or a table yet. Okay. Okay. But I can drag these around and I can look at stuff and say, okay, I'm going to put a chair there, a table there. I'm going to show you guys a really kind of cool tool. With the select key, select thing, Hold down Option or Alt Option for the Mac, Alt for the PC, and you will get a little plus sign next to it. And that is going to copy and drag. Yeah, I didn't show you that before because you need to learn to do stuff otherwise. Okay? Uh, that'll duplicate it. Uh, this allows you to place it where you want it. It saves a step. Because if you duplicate it, it's going to duplicate it right here. Yeah. And then you have to drag it around. This, you have control of it. So you go, I want to select this and copy it and drag it, and it's all one step. So yes, control D, I, it, yeah. I think that's the duplicate command. It does it, but it puts it somewhere else. You have to go find it, which I find to be a pain in the neck. OK, and this is really simple, because I can do chairs and tables all day. Okay, I do want to show you what this is going to look like in 3D. Those of you that have Vectorworks 2015, it will look slightly cooler in 3D. Okay, but look, I have chair and table. They're on the ground. This is not as useful, but when you're doing a rough ground plan, look, chair, look, table. Woohoo. Okay, you can do this really quickly. Yes, hat. How you fireplaces? Okay, again, for your rough ground plan, Portion, I would figure out what dimensions it needs to be and do a rectangle of the right size and write fireplace. Okay? And on a rough ground plan, that's what you need. Now I'm going to show you guys, because we have some time, how to convert this stuff to 3D. I'm going to be showing you more on this later. Okay? 3D is like a whole like huge chunk of things that we can do, okay? But on 3D, so I have this thing, okay? I'm going I'm to do the, well, I'm going to do the fireplace first, okay? Uh, one thing, if you have grouped the text fireplace and the box fireplace, before you do this step, you have to ungroup them because you cannot put text, I'm about to say, you don't want to put text in 3D. Maybe you can, um, okay? I'm going to select the fireplace. So this is my fireplace. My fireplace is how tall? Oh, it's about five feet. I don't know. Okay. So this is a 2D rectangle, right? Model, or sorry, model, extrude. And it says, okay, what's my extrusion? Extrusion means take something from 2D into 3D world. Okay. So it is five feet high. I'm going to type in five feet. I click OK. Did you see the change happen? No. Why? Because you're in 2D world. Let's move to 3D world. Ah, look, my fireplace. Okay? And you're like going, but I can see through it. Well, I can also see through my wall at the moment. If I go view, rendering, hidden line, now my fireplace is solid. And my wall is solid. Okay? I, in this view, by the way, glass is also solid. You have to be in a, uh, a, a different rendering to have your glass see through. Sorry, uh, but this is a really fast rendering method, so it, it works really fast by making everything solid. Okay, um, but look, now I have a fireplace. Yes. If you're making that a fireplace with the like the depth in it, you do that or just like yes. Off? No, you can do that. Not today. I'm not going to show you how to do that today. There's a whole 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 mess of tools. Let me double check the syllabus, but I think. Today, doors and windows uh, and basic ground plan. Three D objects and hybrid objects. Let me just check what our next one is. 
symbols. You know what? I'll show you this stuff today. Why not? Okay. So 3D objects are built out of blocks. And we build 3D objects the easiest way, and yes, there are other ways, because Austin's going to sit in the back and go, I have another tool that you can use. Yes, there are lots of tools you can use. Uh, I think for people starting out, the easiest way to build 3D objects is to build them out of basically building blocks. So, okay, I have a fireplace. Okay, well, that's good, but it needs a hole cut in it, right? Okay. Um, so I am going to go to a front view, and it needs a hole cut in it, and that hole is going to be a rectangle. Do you want an arched fireplace? Okay. Okay, and so I'm going to, whoops, let's do this one. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to select these two objects, and I'm going to extrude both of them. Now, extrude is going to come towards me, okay? I'm going to make this five feet deep. That's fine. It doesn't matter at this point, okay? And so I want a fireplace arch that looks like this. I don't want it to be these two objects. I want them to be the combination of them, so I'm going to select them. If you extrude them together, Vectorworks helps you by grouping them which is not usually a help. Okay, I'm going to ungroup them so they're two separate objects. I'm now going to add them together. So I get one object that is this whole thing. And I do that by going model, add solids. Now they're one thing. But I don't really want a three-dimensional object that looks like that. I want a hole that looks like that, don't I? So I'm going to go back to my top view. And I'm going to make sure that my five foot long hole intersects my fireplace. And I'm going to select my fireplace and my object that I want to be my hole. And what do you think I'm going to do now? I'm going to subtract solids. So I go model, subtract solids. And it's going to say, if I hold my mouse over OK, it says highlight the object to be subtracted from. So yes, I want to subtract that from the fireplace, right? I'm going to say OK. And now when I go into 3D, my fireplace has a hole in it. Okay, but you know what else fireplaces have? Fireplaces have that thingy that sticks out in front of them. What's that called? Oh yeah, it's a hearth. Okay, so I want to build a hearth for this. Okay, so my hearth should kind of come and stick out and yeah, that looks about right. It should be about, I don't know, yay tall. Uh, so that yay tall is going to be, I don't know, um, 16 inches. Okay? And let me look at that in 3D and make sure that, lock, that looks right. Yeah, that looks pretty close to right. So I can uh, select my two objects and modify and add solids. Or model add solids. Oh, but you know what? It always sticks out a little bit more at the top, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. That's easy. So I'm going to draw another little rectangle here, but it's going to be a little bit bigger rectangle. Oops, it lined up a little bit better. Center point, center point. Okay, and I'm going to extrude this, but this is only going to extrude, I don't know, 6 inches. But we extruded this 16 inches, so what I want is I actually want this up higher. So I'm going to set my bottom of this at 10 inches. Let me move it to a front view so you can see this. Okay, so currently this, my little bit that sticks out on the floor, I want it up higher. I could drag it, okay, but I actually know I want it to be at 10 inches. So I can just type that into my object info. And now I'm going to add that to this. Model add solids, okay. And now this should all be one thing. Yep. And in 3D, Okay, I've, I notice how I'm just building this up piece by piece, okay, and I'm adding things to it and subtracting things from it, okay? So add and subtract solids are your way to do that. Now, you can go, oh, you know what, that's too thick. I don't like that. I want that lip to be thinner, okay? Is it too late? It's never too late, okay? 
by double clicking on an object, I'm now into an edit mode, okay? And it's gonna actually take me backwards through the way I've created. Notice there's an orange box around all of this. So at this point, I have this piece and this piece separate. So I'm gonna click on just this piece and go, you know what, instead of six inches, I want this to be two inches. And that means I want the bottom to be 14 inches. Okay, that looks better. Oh, and you know what, this hole should be a little farther down. Oh, but that hole's still part of the whole thing. I know, let me just double click on this. Oh, is my hole separate yet? Oh no, my hole's still not separate. Double click again. Ah, oh, now my hole is a separate object. Okay, I'm gonna look at this from the front. And I'm gonna zoom way far in because I, what I really want is I want this to come down to there. Okay, and then I exit, so in this case it's a subtraction. Exit that. Oh, I've got that fixed. Uh oh, did I move something? Up oh, and yes, I have somehow screwed this up because I moved something. Yes, I did. Um, okay, so fine. So I somehow got all this stuff separated. Whoops. This back to here. I'm gonna move this. Whoops. Escape. Move this back to here. And exit solid addition. Exit solid subtraction. And wow, did I really screw this up? Um, one of the things you do want to try to make sure of is that you're doing things. Checking it each step of the way. And there's my fireplace. Yay, okay? So if you need to build a we weird, wacky fireplace, um, you can do that. At the moment, for your rough ground plan, don't spend a ton of time doing this, okay? I will show you, I know, Gary. I will show you there's an even easier way. A fireplace, you probably, you might want to do this. But, you know, trying to build a chair, don't build a chair. Okay? If you really need something more three-dimensional for a chair, extrude a chair. Oh, ungroup. Um, and so a chair is about yay tall. That's what, 30 inches? Okay. Um, that is good enough for rough ground plan world. Okay? There is a chair tool in Vectorworks. I'm not showing it to you today because that is li literally on the list for another day. Okay, um, Chairs, couches, things like that. For the moment, do boxes okay, of the right sizes. Okay, And this is going to let you start to go, okay, here's my fireplace. I need my fireplace to come over here. And remember, we have our rotate tool so I can rotate it. Okay. Uh, one of the other things I want to show you how to do uh, is um, turn your snaps on and off. Window, palettes, snapping. So snaps are things that help you draft. Okay, windows, palettes, snapping. And so at the moment I have all of mine turned off. Okay, um, what a snap does, so the first one is snap to grid. Okay, Vectorworks decides what your grid should be. And as I'm moving around, I'm going to snap to the grid. Um, I don't ever actually find that one useful. Okay, snap to endpoints or center points of an object. So you know what? I really want my chair to be right up against this corner. As I move close to the corner, I'm all of a sudden it's going to say endpoint. I'm going to have jumped there. Okay. Um, in case my fireplace, I want my fireplace right at the at the corner of the wall. And all I have to do is get close, and it's going to take me right there. Okay, one of the cool things about this now is I can now, with my rotate on, click here at the endpoint, click at the endpoint of my fireplace, and now click at the endpoint of my wall, and now I'm exactly lined up with my wall. Okay, um, this is snap to angle. It's going to snap to your angles that are multiples of 30, 60, or 45. Okay, so yes, you know, now I want to rotate this chair, rotate the chair. 
and with my snap on, horizontal. It'll let me go other places. Oh, but I get close to 30. Oh, you wanted to go to 30. Oh, you want to go to 45. Okay. And it will let me rotate um, specific things. Uh, this one is snapped intersection where two lines cross. This one's kind of cool. It's called a smart point. Let me see if I can get this to work real well. Smart points are sometimes really awesome and sometimes kind of a pain. So if I want this to line up downstage of the corner of this wall, I come and I hover my mouse over the endpoint. And then I come down and it says, oh, you're trying to align with that wall. And what's going to happen in a second is it's going to say you're trying to align with the wall and you're trying to just move straight over. Okay? And click. And now I have aligned. It allows you to kind of try to convince Vectorworks I'm trying to line up with this and this. It's tricky because Vectorworks is trying to figure out what you're trying to think. And you have a computer trying to think like a human, trying to think like a computer. Um, sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they're not. Okay? Uh, the snaps that I find the most useful are my angle snaps and my object snaps. Okay? But again, you can turn on whatever you want. Um, snap to distance, uh, smart edge, uh, smart tangent. Uh, are, you know, anything that says smart, it's, Vectorworks is going to try to think for you. Um, uh, all I have to say is think about how good Apple does or your phone does at predicting the next word you're trying to type. Um, okay? 30. Yeah, 30 percent right and 70 percent what the heck. It doesn't know the word sum. Okay. <laughs> um, mine tried to correct, I was trying to type on my way and it, on mine and the suggestion was bicycle. I'm like, really? I don't think I've ever typed the word bicycle. So anyway, um, smart. It's the computer trying to be smart. Think about that for what it's worth, okay? But your Irmavep rough ground plan should eventually look like this. Now you should be doing it on download the theater. Please note, if you are working in Vectorworks 2015, please download the 2015 theater. If you are working in Vectorworks 2012, please download the 2012 theater. Um, the 2015 is not just the 2012 file updated. There are a couple of things that Vectorworks handles very, very differently that I have corrected. Um, okay, so whatever version you're working in, be ready to work in it. Okay? Um, and remember that the lab is Vectorworks 2012. Okay. Um, so, you know, this is on my way to a good rough ground plan. Now, okay, this is not a particularly interesting set, and I've got all kinds of sideline problems, but this could be my set. Okay? You want to do stairs or platforms? Platforms are easy, by the way. Platforms, here is a rectangle. Rectangles are plat platforms are rectangles or circles, and I extrude them. Extrude. Sure, 30 inches. Why not? Okay. Stairs. And uh, I'm going to recommend that if you're doing stairs, you play with them for a bit. But under our tool sets, below wall, is stairs. Um, and stair tool. Click on stairs. And uh, continue. Find wireframe. And there's a staircase. Click on settings for all the four billion things you can change on stairs. Play with them. Okay, if you have trouble, come see me during an office hour. Okay, but there's four million settings and play with them. The lock means no matter what else I do, don't edit this value. Okay. okay. Cancel. We're not going to really do stairs at the moment. Okay. Uh, when you're doing your rough ground plan, a couple of hints. Create a class for scenery that is there all the time, whether it's Egypt or Act 1 in Mandacrest or Act 2 in Mandacrest. Create a class for any scenery that is not there all the time. So it's all on its own class. So that you can turn it off. Okay? Also, eventually, you're going to have to figure out any scenery that's not there all the time where it lives while it's not there. 
how it gets on and off stage. Okay? You don't get to just go, well, poof, it's gone. It has to go somewhere. Okay? You don't just to go, oh, yeah, well, it, you know, that's in Egypt. We don't need to worry about where it goes. Yeah, you do. You got to figure out where it goes. Okay? Other questions? Yes? Where's the, the, the wall door that works this on? Uh -huh. it? Yes. The next two, I think it's a week from today, yeah. I'm not looking at a syllabus. Other questions? Okay, I'm going to end the recording.